Why do we actually need so many food types in aquaristics? I have now just three. But you know, when you are standing before the shelves, there are meters of different food types. Do we really need so many different types for our fish? What is important? Why are there so many different food types? Is that really necessary? Let's take a look at the animal kingdom. In the animal kingdom, we have, for example, as everyone knows, pure plant eaters. These include cows and are known as ruminants. Grass is not very easy to digest. This is why they have several stomachs and ruminate or re-chew. But the cow most certainly eats small grasshoppers and insects with the grass as well. The protein is therefore not made up purely of plant matter. It certainly has some animal content. Then we have the opposite, the meat eaters. And we all know the story of the wolf or the big cat. It is well known that the wolf, when it attacks a sheep, first it devours the sheep's stomach. And what is the sheep's stomach full of? Plants. This means that although the meat eater eats meat, it also gets its ration of plants. And then there are the animals between herbivores, the plant eaters, and carnivores, the meat eaters, namely the omnivores, who eat everything. One of my professors once put it nicely. An omnivore can not only eat everything, it has to eat everything. This means that the omnivore cannot survive with a one-sided diet. It might eat just the one, but it also needs the other. The diet, therefore, has to be balanced. I have now mentioned by way of example cows, wolves and omnivores. These include, for example, rats and pigs. They eat everything. So do most bears, apart from the polar bear. But the other types of bears eat a lot of different things. And we also have such animal groups in the aquarium. We have, for example, live bearing tooth calves. These are mainly plant eaters that graze on algae, but they also consume plankton at the same time with the algae. This is why a food for these animals must not be made up purely of plant matter. Mostly of plant matter, yes, but not purely of plant matter. If we have predatory cichlids, we have the equivalent to the wolf. They eat mainly animal protein, but they also need some plant food at the same time. And then the large group of omnivores, the Danionins, the tetras. Many types of tetras, not the piranha, but many types of tetras are omnivores. They need something of everything. It is important, therefore, that you vary the diet of your aquarium fish. The more varied the diet, the better. Now you also need to be aware of what type of fish you have. If I keep, for example, goldfish, I basically have a cold water fish. This means it is not kept in tropical warm water temperatures, but has a lower water temperature. And this means a slower metabolism. For such fish, there is therefore goldfish food, and for tropical ornamental fish, there is ornamental fish food, in all of its varieties. But please do not mix. Do not think you are doing something good for a goldfish by giving it food for tropical ornamental fish. The protein content in such food is much higher, and cold water fish need a lower protein content. Such foods differ already in the protein content. Then there are different types of food. We have granulated food. Let's take a look at this. I will cut it open. Here we have granulated food. Here we have flake food. There are also food tablets. There are many different types of food, and the question is, which is the best? Do I need both? Should I take flake food or granulated food? This is not easy to answer. Granulated food indeed has some advantages. It fits into automatic feeders. This is not bad because the automatic feeder does not jam, and the same quantity is always dispensed. 
In the case of flake food, this is not so easy, because depending on how the flakes fall on each other, only two flakes might fit in. Or if they fall differently and pile up, then ten flakes might fit in. The dispensing of flake food using an automatic feeder is therefore complicated, and is much easier for granulated food. Granulated food is more substantial than flake food. In everyday language, you could say one is like steak, the other is like soup. You can also see this when the fish are eating. Here we even have a feeder. I will open it. If we are going to do it, we are going to do it right from the beginning. If I feed here, the animals here are not used to it, the food sinks. That is the first difference already. The animals have to bite it. They have to almost bite off a piece. Here, the size of the mouth matters. This is very important. If the food is too big, they cannot eat it properly, only bite pieces off. That is a lot of work. If I now take the flakes, I know this is goldfish food, but I will do it anyway. The flakes would be far too big. I therefore make the flakes smaller and we see that the animals are seemingly accustomed to eating on the surface, because they get stuck into the flake food relatively quickly. And I have much more time. The fish can therefore eat in peace near the surface. It doesn't sink so quickly to the bottom. On the other hand, the fish have learned very quickly that the food sinks, because some of the fish are at the bottom and eat at the bottom. Strictly speaking, it is actually not important. In this case, it depends more on the shape of the mouth. If it is a fish with a superior mouth, it will eat on the surface. Catfish have an inferior mouth. They eat on the bottom. And then there are those with a terminal mouth. They can eat anywhere. Live-bearing tooth carps have a superior mouth. That is to say, in nature, they are primarily busy eating near the surface. This is only partly true. I have watched live-bearing tooth carps, in this case sword tails, in Central America, and seen how they really eat. They eat near the surface insect larvae that fall onto the surface of the water. This is why they are unfortunately planted all over the world as invasive species, to eat mosquito larvae. However, they also eat a lot of algae that grows on wood and stone, like the Lake Malawi or Lake Tanganyika chicklids. This live-bearing tooth carp grazes on this algae, but in doing so also eats plankton. So what was said about the shape of the mouth is only partly true, because we see in the case of fish such as Cory catfish, which have an inferior mouth, that they learn very quickly to eat differently. The size of the food is much more important. If the food is too big, we have a real problem. The fish cannot eat it. If you buy small neon tetra, you really need very small powdered food, otherwise the fish have a problem. If you have big fish, on the other hand, food that is too small makes no sense, because the big fish almost doesn't see the small food, and it would have to eat vast quantities of it in order to feel anything like full, which, by the way, never is. A fish will eat as long as something fits in. The composition of the food is actually the most important thing. I had already said at the beginning, please use different types of food, not always the same. I think you don't want to eat the same thing every day either. The more variety in the menu, the better it is for the fish. They are healthier, do not get any diseases, display nicer colors, and in some circumstances they only reproduce when the food is varied. That is the most important thing. On the subject of variety for fish, I have borrowed a good idea from the owner of a pet shop. It sounds silly at first, but it is good. He said, give the fish breakfast, dinner and tea. I said, what are you talking about? The fish couldn't care less. And he replied, it is important to the customers of my pet shop that I tell them what they should do. I tell them, this is the breakfast, this is the dinner and this is the tea for the fish. They must not mix it up. The customers then come back to the shop and say, I need one breakfast and one tea, which is great. It doesn't really matter when they are fed what, but that the food is rotated. One type is used for breakfast, one for dinner and one for tea. Phenomenal. The normal aquarist, who would otherwise not remember what he last fed the fish, knows what he should choose to ensure that there really is a variation. It may also be live food, it may also be frozen food, but as a basis there should definitely be three types of food, so that there is variety in the daily feeding. One very important question is, how much should you feed? 
There is no precise rule. You can convert the body weight of the fish in grams into the amount of food they need, but who wants to do that? We need to have a general rule, some kind of guideline we can keep to. And the rule is that we only feed as much as the fish can eat up in a few minutes. A few minutes is not half an hour, a few minutes are approximately three to four minutes. A major exception are seahorses in seawater. They eat so slowly that they need the whole day. But the normal freshwater fish eats relatively quickly, and that is why the rule is a few minutes. A click doser is helpful when feeding. It is good to have a doser when I don't want to hold the food. Otherwise, there is the option of feeding from the fingertips, which is also not bad. But many try to feed from the pack, and that is dangerous, because then you can very quickly find yourself pouring in, oops, too much. It has happened to me too, and that way is not good. Why not? Firstly, the fish will balloon, but that is not the whole problem. What is worse is that the food will remain uneaten in the aquarium, because it was simply too much. I then have water pollution. The pollutants increase, and I get algae problems. This is why we have incorporated a dosing lid on some foods. You can press down on it. It is the same process that is used, for example, for sweeteners, and food for approximately five fish comes out, to name a figure. And if you don't know exactly how many fish you need to feed, you can follow these dosage instructions. If I have 10 fish, press twice. If I have 15 fish, press three times. That is a good guideline. With flake food, it is much more difficult. Here we follow the rule that I have already explained. I feed only as much as the fish can eat up in a few minutes. And if food is floating all over the surface of the water, that was far too much. That is the main problem in aquaristics. To put it crudely, a fish has never starved, but millions of fish have been overfed, with the resulting algae problem, dirty water and so on. This is why you should ensure that you feed different types of food, not too much, and that the composition of the food is right for the fish, right for meat eaters, plant eaters, omnivores. Take into account the size of the mouth, very small food, big food, depending on the size of the fish, and regarding the quantity of food, only what can be eaten in a few minutes. 